from my villa at Nomentum. I send you greeting and bid you keep a sound spirit within you. In other words, gain the blessing of all the gods, for he is assured of their grace and favor who has become a blessing to himself. Lay aside for the present the belief of certain persons that a god is assigned to each one of us as a sort of attendant, not a god of regular rank, but one of a lower grade, one of those whom Ovid calls plebeian gods. Yet, while laying aside this belief, I would have you remember that our ancestors who followed such a creed have become Stoics, for they have assigned a genius or a Juno to every individual. Later on we shall investigate whether the gods have enough time on their hands to care for the concerns of private individuals. In the meantime, you must know that whether we are allotted to special guardians, or whether we are neglected and consigned to fortune, you can curse a man with no heavier curse than to pray that he may be at enmity with himself. There is no reason, however, why you should ask the gods to be hostile to any one whom you regard as deserving of punishment. They are hostile to such a person, I maintain, even though he seems to be advanced by their favor. Apply careful investigation, considering how our affairs actually stand, and not what men say of them. You will then understand that evils are more likely to help us than to harm us. For how often has so-called affliction been the source and the beginning of happiness? How often have privileges which we welcomed with deep thanksgiving built steps for themselves to the top of a precipice, still uplifting men who were already distinguished just as if they had previously stood in a position whence they could fall in safety? But this very fall has in it nothing evil if you consider the end, after which nature lays no man lower. The universal limit is near. Yes, there is near us the point where the prosperous man is upset, and the point where the unfortunate is set free. It is we ourselves that extend both these limits, lengthening them by our hopes and by our fears. If, however, you are wise, Measure all things according to the state of man. Restrict at the same time both your joys and your fears. Moreover, it is worth while not to rejoice at anything for long, so that you may not fear anything for long. But why do I confine the scope of this evil? There is no reason why you should suppose that anything is to be feared. All these things which stir us and keep us aflutter are empty things. None of us has sifted out the truth. We have passed fear on to one another. None has dared to approach the object which caused his dread and to understand the nature of his fear. I, the good behind it. That is why falsehood and vanity still gain credit. Because they are not refuted, let us account it worth while to look closely at the matter. Then it will be clear how fleeting, how unsure, and how harmless are the things which we fear. The disturbance in our spirits is similar to that which Lucretius detected. Like boys who cower frightened in the dark, so grown-ups in the light of day feel fear. What, then? Are we not more foolish than any child? we who in the light of day feel fear but you were wrong lucretius we are not afraid in the daylight we have turned everything into a state of darkness we see neither what injures nor what profits us all our lives through we blunder along neither stopping nor treading more carefully on this account but you see what madness it is to rush ahead in the dark. Indeed, we are bent on getting ourselves called back from a greater distance, and though we do not know our goal, yet we hasten with wild speed in the direction whither we are straining. The light, however, may begin to shine, provided we are willing. But such a result can come about only in one way. If we acquire by knowledge this familiarity with things divine and human, 
if we not only flood ourselves but steep ourselves therein if a man reviews the same principles even though he understands them and applies them again and again to himself if he has investigated what is good what is evil and what has falsely been so entitled and finally if he has investigated honor and baseness and providence the range of the human intelligence is not confined within these limits it may also explore outside the universe its destination and its source and the ruin toward which all nature hastens so rapidly we have withdrawn the soul from this divine contemplation and dragged it into mean and lowly tasks so that it might be a slave to greed so that it might forsake the universe and its confines and under the command of masters who try all possible schemes pry beneath the earth and seek what evil it can dig up therefrom discontented with that which was freely offered to it now god who is the father of us all has placed ready to our hands those things which he intended for our own good he did not wait for any search on our part and he gave them to us voluntarily but that which would be injurious he buried deep in the earth we can complain of nothing but ourselves for we have brought to light the materials for our destruction against the will of nature who hid them from us we have bound over our souls to pleasure whose service is the source of all evil we have surrendered ourselves to self-seeking and reputation and to other aims which are equally idle and useless what then do i now encourage you to do nothing new we are not trying to find cures for new evils but this first of all namely to see clearly for yourself what is necessary and what is superfluous what is necessary will meet you everywhere what is superfluous has always to be hunted out and with great endeavor but there is no reason why you should flatter yourself over much if you despise gilded couches and jeweled furniture for what virtue lies in despising useless things the time to admire your own conduct is when you have come to despise the necessities you are doing no great thing if you can live without royal pomp if you feel no craving for boars which weigh a thousand pounds or for flamingo tongues or for the other absurdities of a luxury that already wearies of game cooked whole and chooses different bits from separate animals i shall admire you only when you have learned to scorn even the common sort of bread when you have made yourself believe that grass grows for the needs of men as well as of cattle when you have found out that food from the treetop can fill the belly into which we cram things of value as if it could keep what it has received we should satisfy our stomachs without being over nice how does it matter what the stomach receives since it must lose whatever it has received you enjoy the carefully arranged dainties which are caught on land and sea some are more pleasing if they are brought fresh to the table others if after long feeding and forced fattening they almost melt and can hardly retain their own grease you like the subtly devised flavor of these dishes but i assure you that such carefully chosen and variously seasoned dishes once they have entered the belly will be overtaken alike by one and the same corruption would you despise the pleasures of eating then consider its result i remember some words of attalus which elicited general applause riches long deceived me i used to be dazed when i caught some gleam of them here and there i used to think that their hidden influence matched their visible show but once at a certain elaborate entertainment i saw embossed work in silver and gold equaling the wealth of a whole city and colors and tapestry devised to match objects which surpassed the value of gold or of silver 
brought not only from beyond our own borders but from beyond the borders of our enemies on one side were slave boys notable for their training and beauty on the other were throngs of slave women and all the other resources that a prosperous and mighty empire could offer after reviewing its possessions what else is this i said to myself than a stirring up of man's cravings which are in themselves provocative of lust what is the meaning of all this display of money did we gather merely to learn what greed was for my own part i left the place with less craving than i had when i entered i came to despise riches not because of their uselessness but because of their pettiness have you noticed how inside a few hours that program however slow moving and carefully arranged was over and done has a business filled up this whole life of ours which could not fill up a whole day i had another thought also the riches seemed to me to be as useless to the possessors as they were to the onlookers accordingly i say to myself whenever a show of that sort dazzles my eyes whenever i see a splendid palace with a well-groomed corps of attendants and beautiful bearers carrying a litter why wonder why gape in astonishment it is all show such things are displayed not possessed while they please they pass away turn thyself rather to the true riches learn to be content with little and cry out with courage and with greatness of soul we have water we have porridge let us compete in happiness with jupiter himself and why not i pray thee make this challenge even without porridge and water for it is base to make the happy life depend upon silver and gold and just as base to make it depend upon water and porridge but some will say what could i do without such things do you ask what is the cure for want it is to make hunger satisfy hunger for all else being equal what difference is there in the smallness or the largeness of the things that force you to be a slave what matter how little it is that fortune can refuse to you your very porridge and water can fall under another's jurisdiction and besides freedom comes not to him over whom fortune has slight power but to him over whom she has no power at all this is what i mean you must crave nothing if you would vie with jupiter for jupiter craves nothing this is what Attalus told us if you are willing to think often of these things you will strive not to seem happy but to be happy and in addition to seem happy to yourself rather than to others farewell end of letter 110 recording by john van stan savannah georgia this librivox recording is in the public domain